Cornuospersum, originally known as Helix aspersa, is a very common garden snail that is invasive to Australia. Because of how common they are and how easy they are to breed in captivity, they are commonly bred to use as feeders for pet lizards. But what is not common and quite frankly very rare indeed is the sinister Cornuospersum. In normal snails of this species, their shell coils to the right but sinistral cornuospersum have their coils facing to the left. So essentially, they are left-handed snails, just like me. Well, minus the snail bit. A very famous lefty snail that you might have heard of is Jeremy the Lefty Snail. He was founded by the UK-based malacologist Angus Davison. Sinistral cornuospersum are produced by developmental accident, perhaps due to a chance or environmentally induced reversal in the third cleavage of the developing embryo. This mutation is considered to be a one in a million phenomenon, but I think that is a pile of poop. Let me explain why. Before Cassie's critters was even invented, I had three pet cornuospersum that I found in my garden. Their names were Rufus, Howard and Edgar. All three of these guys were dextral individuals. After hatching at least 1,000 snails, I unexpectedly hatched my very first sinister snail in early 2018. I called him Viridian, after the colour. And then, even more unexpectedly, after hatching approximately 2,406 snails, I hatched yet another snail, which was sinister, in November of 2018. His name was Vertigris after yet another colour. And then, for a third time, another sinistral snail hatched out on the 8th of January 2019. He was named Valentine, after the villain from the Mortal Instruments series. And on the 15th of January 2019, I yet again hatched out another sinistral cornuospersum. I named this one Voldemort, after the noseless villain from Harry Potter. Once all of these lefty snails were mature, they were housed together in the hopes to breed more lefty snails. They began breeding and began laying eggs, but unfortunately every single batch of eggs were infertile and never hatched, and I still to this day do not understand why. During this time, Viridian passed away in 2020. The cause of death was unknown. Also during this time, my house had to get sprayed for termites. To ensure my snails, who lived in my bedroom, wouldn't get poisoned from the insecticides, I had them a temporary home outside, where I thought they would be safe for a few days. But boy was I wrong. All was well, until one morning I went to check up on my slimy friends, when I noticed a massive hole chewed through the top of the plastic container. I opened the lid, hoping to find my snails, but all I found was rat poo. A rat? ate all three of my sinistral snails. During this time, Angus Davidson himself actually contacted me via Instagram asking specific questions about my sinistral population for his studies. He later published an article about the origin of these rare mirror image snails. His estimate for sinistral snails to occur is about 1 in 40,000 snails, which seems more accurate than the 1 in a million. So, although a bloody rodent of all things put an end to my lucky snails, at least their statistical information will forever live in Angus Davidson's publications. If you have been subscribed for a while, you will know that I have recently gotten back into keeping pet corn or spursum. I made a video in the past recording me setting up an enclosure for two garden snails. Well, I now have three. Peppers and Glowworms commented on this video saying that my snail enclosure has hobbit hole vibes. Because of this, I decided to name these snails Frodo Baggins, Bilbo Baggins and Gandalf the Wise. So far, this year these three snails have produced over 300 babies. All of them have been dextral but maybe, just maybe, we will be lucky enough to hash out a bunch of sinister snails. And that marks the end of this video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video which will be all about how to look after Pusselli Nides